Hey everybody, coming at you live from out of space. Just kidding, I'm in my office again. This week we're looking at minimalism, conceptual art, and earth art. And as we'll see, there are a little bit of overlap between each of these different types of art. We've seen over the last few weeks from Dada to Fluxus, how there's been an increasing emphasis on the idea or concept rather than the finished product. Artistic skill and the final product are not as important as the idea or concept itself. This gives birth to what would be called conceptual art in the 1960s. Joseph Kosuth was a conceptual artist and he challenges us with this artwork entitled One and Three Chairs from 1965. He asks us to consider whether one of the three is any more or less of a chair than the other. The image of the chair, the real physical chair, or the dictionary definition of a chair. What do you think? Piero Manzoni, an Italian artist, was also interested in pushing the conceptual side of art. In May 1961, while he was living in Milan, Manzoni produced 90 cans of artist's shit. A label on each can identified the contents as artist's shit, contents 30 grams, produced and tinned in May 1961. However, these works have become notorious in part because of the lingering uncertainty about whether they do or do not indeed contain Manzoni's feces. And that's not really important. What's important is the idea or the concept that he has in fact put his own excrement in a can and sold it. So it's the idea that's key here, not the actual finished piece. Sola Witt is another conceptual artist who creates instructions for creating his works, usually large-scale drawings made directly on the wall, so that anyone could theoretically take those instructions and create his works themselves. The idea and description of the drawing is the work of art, although the drawings themselves can be pretty interesting too. The result is usually pretty minimal, showcases repetition and geometric forms, and is totally abstract and non-representational. Minimalism also made use of the grid and repetition, but was much more restrained. The work is often monochromatic, in other words, just consisting of one color, and is totally abstract and non-representational. One example is Ad Reinhardt. who painted a series of totally black paintings starting in the late 1950s. These were made by layering many thin layers of paint into the form of a grid. He uses varying colors, even though the result is usually an overall black image that sometimes results in a faint image of a cross. Donald Judd made sculptural objects like the ones we see on the left. I actually used to work at that museum, by the way, that's in upstate New York. Um, he used industrial materials like plywood in this case, or plexiglass in very minimal forms, like boxes, as you see here. Like the work we saw last week by Neo Dada and Fluxus artists, minimalists like Judd blur the lines between art and life by putting their sculpture directly onto the floor rather than up on a pedestal, almost creating an installation or an environment. Artists like Robert Morris and Carl Andre worked within a very similar aesthetic of plain slab blocks, often unpainted, in some cases, the work is painted in a solid, nondescript color. Again, notice how the work is all directly on the floor, part of our space. Robert Morris also played around with performance art as his columns were used as part of a performance piece in which the columns would stand, then suddenly fall down. Originally, Morris himself was inside of the column, but he hurt himself so bad on the first try that he had to instead use thread to pull down the columns. In the works we just saw on the previous screen, there's a weird connection to Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey from 1968. <laughs>
Many minimalist artists, among others, became dissatisfied with the museum and gallery system. Beyond the fact that museums and galleries are often fueled by dirty money, and the fact that they commodify art, artists didn't like the way that the work was crammed into a small space without sufficient space for the individual artworks to breathe, and without the opportunity to showcase many works or large-scale works by a single artist. So a number of minimalist artists move out into the world, make use of wide open spaces, and situate their large-scale work out in nature. Here, artists like Donald Judd could make work as large as he wanted, or as large as funding would allow, approaching an architectural scale. Artists like Richard Long could use nature as artistic materials, creating a minimalist line in the grass simply by walking back and forth over and over again. Work like this that's made out of the earth is called earth art, sometimes land art. These are examples of what we refer to as site-specific work as well. In other words, they're specific for the particular site or location that they were made for. Some artists, like Robert Smithson, placed industrial and man-made materials in nature to create a juxtaposition. In this example, he placed nine square mirrors with 30 centimeter sides in nine different landscapes on the Yucatan Peninsula to create a juxtaposition between man-made and natural forms. For his famous spiral jetty, located in the Great Salt Lake of Utah, he created a jetty out of over 6,000 tons of black basalt rocks and earth from the site. It ended up being 1,500 feet long and 15 feet wide, and it winds off the shore into the water. Over time, the water level has ebbed and flowed. For some time, the water actually totally covered the entire jetty and it wasn't visible at all. When it reemerged years later, it was covered in beautiful light pink crystals like you see on the right. So it's a work that is constantly changing as the site itself changes. Another example of an artist who works in a minimalist aesthetic, but also relies on a relationship to nature and changing conditions is Walter de Maria. His lightning field in a remote area of New Mexico consists of 400 polished stainless steel poles installed on a grid. You can walk amongst the poles and admire it as a minimalist work of art, but during certain weather conditions, you could find yourself amid a field of lightning rods. This, like Spiral Jetty or Judd's installation in far west Texas, are all in remote areas out west, places that are out in the middle of nowhere. So part of the piece is also about that journey to get to these remote installations. Christo and Jean-Claude were a husband and wife team who took the minimalist aesthetic and created monumental site-specific installations. They were most known for wrapping buildings or bridges or even islands in brightly colored fabric. But one of my favorite works was one that I saw when living in New York. It was called The Gates and it was installed in Central Park. The work consisted of these bright orange arches draped with flowing fabric, which framed your view of the park and animated it in a new way, punctuating the man-made landscape with these pops of color and movement. All right, so that's about it for this week. I hope you're all doing well. Please do stay in touch if you have any questions at all. And in the meantime, Take care, everybody. See you next time.